problem 35A, adjusting entries and adjusted trial balance. In chapter two, you learned about journal entries, debits and credits, posting to ledgers, and the unadjusted trial balance. In chapter three, you learned about adjusting entries and the adjusted trial balance. So let's take a look at problem 35A. In transaction A, it states unexpired insurance at July 31st is $4,800. If you look at the unadjusted trial balance that is presented on page 141, you can see that the prepaid insurance account has a debit balance of $7,200. What we're going to do is we're going to deduct the ending balance of $4,800 from the $7,200, and we determine that the insurance expired for that particular period is $2,400. So we're going to debit insurance expense by $2,400 and credit prepaid insurance by $2,400. We're going to increase the expense account and decrease the asset prepaid insurance account. When we post this particular entry to the ledgers, once it is completed, you will see that the prepaid insurance account will now have a balance of $4,800. Transaction B states supplies on hand at July 31st is $600. You can see by looking at the unadjusted trial balance on page 141 that supplies has a debit balance of $1,980. We're going to deduct the $600 supplies on hand amount from the $1,980 and we determine that supplies used for the period was $1,380. So we're going to debit supplies expense for $1,380 and credit supplies for $1,380. When we enter the suggesting entry into the ledgers, we will see that the supplies account will now have a balance of $600. In transaction C, it states depreciation of the building for the year is $3,100. Depreciation expense is debited for $3,100 and accumulated depreciation for the building is credited for $3,100. Accumulated depreciation is actually a contra asset account, which means it contradicts the asset that it belongs to. And in this particular case, the asset is the building and accumulated depreciation is the contra asset to building. The difference between the building account and accumulated depreciation for the building account is known as the book value. So the building has a debit balance of $200,250. If I deduct an additional $3,100 and add that to the accumulated depreciation account, we then end up with a new balance and a new book value. This will update every single month as we record the depreciation for the building. In transaction D, depreciation of the equipment for the year is 2,700. Again, you're going to debit depreciation expense for 2,700 and credit the accumulated depreciation account for equipment for 2,700 updating this account, and creating a new book value. In transaction E, it states that the rent unearned at July 31st is 1750 If you look at the unadjusted trial balance on page 141, you can see that the unearned rent account has a credit balance of 6750 Unearned rent is a liability. It is a liability that is incurred when a customer of yours prepays you for services that you have not yet rendered. And in this case, somebody has prepaid their rent to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with the beginning balance of $6,750, deduct the ending balance to determine how much was actually earned. We're going to credit unearned rent, I'm sorry, debit unearned rent for $5,000 and credit rent revenue for $5,000. This will decrease the unearned rent account, bringing the balance down to $1,750, and increase the revenue account, adding revenue of $5,000.
I also want you to think of unearned revenue accounts in the instance of a lawyer. A lawyer has a client. A client comes to the lawyer and says, I need your assistance. And the lawyer asks for a retainer fee. That retainer fee is a liability to the lawyer until the lawyer actually earns that money. And it will be held in an unearned revenue account, also known as an escrow account. And as the lawyer does work, they will then basically transfer money from that unearned revenue account over to the actual revenue account to show that revenue. In the meantime, unearned revenue is considered to be the liability. In transaction F, accrued salaries and wages at July 31st were $3,000. This generally insinuates that the pay period is split between a month or two months or even between one year to the next. And what we need to do is record the expense to the actual month or period that it belongs to and then hold it as a payable until the end of the pay period in which we pay all of the salaries including the payable that we have accrued. So we will debit salaries and wages expense by $3,000 and credit salaries and wages payable by $3,000. We will hold this payable until the end of the pay period. We will then pay out the remaining amount of the expense plus the payable for the total amount of payroll. In transaction G, Fees earned but unbilled at July 31st is $10,750. This is simply indicating to you that you need to bill your customers that you've done work for. We will debit accounts receivable for $10,750 and credit fees earned for $10,750. Keep in mind fees earned is considered to be the revenue account for this particular transaction. And this transaction is something that you've seen already before. We use this particular transaction when we are um, billing a customer and accruing revenue. Now, now that we have looked at all the actual adjusting entries, you must then post each and every one of these entries to the ledgers in updating the balances. And once you update the balance, you will then create what is known as the unadjusted trial balance. With your book in front of you, I want you to make sure that you're looking at page 141 in your textbook and you're looking at the unadjusted trial balance and comparing it to the adjusted trial balance that I show here. Notice that cash, land, building, equipment, accounts payable, capital, drawing, utilities expense, advertising expense, repairs expense, and miscellaneous expense did not change as far as the balance because we did not adjust them. However, we did adjust the accounts receivable, prepaid insurance, supplies, accumulated depreciation for the building, accumulated depreciation for the equipment, unearned rent, salaries and wages payable. We adjusted fees earned and rent revenue as well as salaries and wages expense. We also used depreciation expense for the building and depreciation expense for the equipment, as well as we updated the supplies expense account. What you will do is you will create the unadjusted trial balance after every adjusting entry set is completed. And from the adjusted trial balance, you can then build all of your financial statements. We learned about the financial statements in Chapter 1. We used the information that was presented to us. However, from this particular statement here, as long as you're balanced, you can feel pretty confident to go ahead and build your income statement, your statement of owner's equity, as well as your balance sheet. This concludes Problem 35A. You may continue with your studies.